Yeah, worms. You also heard um, uh, "Achy Breaky Heart" by um, Billy Ray Cyrus and his its parody um, "Achy Breaky Song" by Weird Al Yankovic. And you're listening to the J Red Show on ninety point seven, the Music FM. We have a banquet going on here at Jesse's Community College. It's some kind of women's banquet, like some sort of women's piece. I didn't quite get quite the cool full finishing, but there was there's a banquet going on. So if you want to check it out, come on over here to Jesse Community College and check out the banquet. But anyhow, let's talk about the Sabers and hockey because we have some news coming out of the Sabers. The Buffalo just Sabers have hired their new head coach. It's former Sabers legend Phil Housley. Housley was drafted by the Sabres in 1982. He played for the Sabres for eight years. He went all over the NHL for a couple of years before retiring in 2004. And I think this is a good hire. Because he, he, then, he, then he went to play be an assistant coach for the Nashville Predators, who won the Western Conference title. And as I just said, it, it, it's a good hire. Um, he, I think he, the, he should help the defense. The Buffalo Sabres' biggest weakness—the Buffalo Sabres' biggest biggest weakness—was um, puck moving defensemen. They really struggled. The defense really struggled under Bylsma, and um, so they hired, get moving the puck up and down the ice. They, they the Sabres de- now yes, they need some new players to help the defense move the puck up and down the ice. But I think Housley should help get a better the system in, and. He should, they should be more focused than they were under Bilesma. They'll be taking more chances. I mean, under Bilesma, the Sabres seemed afraid to um, to make a mistake. Housley, I, I think, was willing to take some chances and make mistakes. Um, and it, it came down to him, Rock, Rush, Rush, Rush it, and Tockett. Although, the, apparently they never hired Tockett. Battle will never hire Tockett. Jason Botterill never um, interviewed Tockett. Um, so, um, I, Housley was definitely the clear choice. Um, Rashad was also a choice, but he had a history with Bilesma. I called WGR and asked if they asked Ryan Gates in the nightcap if Richard was a problem. But um, he said, because, because he worked with Bilesma, but... Um, According to him, he said no, it was, wouldn't be a problem. But at the end of the day, I'm glad they hired Biles. Um, I'm glad they hired Hiresley. because, um, as I said, he was definitely a Saber from the '80s. Although the Sabers of the '80s were criticized for being a soft, finesse team, there wasn't a lot of hard hitting, and there wasn't a lot of, um, and um, he was, and Housley was very, especially Housley. Housley was the symbol of this player. In fact, I was listening to Ryan Gates, and he said. Hit up, hit up with your purse, Housley. Well, in my generation, it was Kodalik. So, Kodalik was the one we were told to hit, the, hit with the purse. But Housley was a soft, finished player. But he was ahead of his time. I like the up-tempo, fast game. He should get the defense involved in as many five-man units when the attack and commence. Um, I'm pretty sure Bottle Bar- said he would never interview Tockett because he was with him for three years and knew who it was all about. He never said he didn't interview Housley. Yeah, I never heard any of them say there was... I I never heard any of them say there was a formal interview, but by all accounts, Housley was here yesterday meeting with the team and again this morning. Um... I gotta say, um... I'm looking for... What do you think of the Housley deal? Um, hit me on my Twitter account, Show. Um, I thought Housley was spot on when it, and it was when he was asked about the players other than the Eichel. He probably went with two guys whose names come to mind. It's the same as I signed my contract three days ago. Oh, no, I didn't. Public speaking, be stressed. I mean, I, I, am, very, I am very excited to be, be, have Housley here. Botterell and Housley feel like such a nice change of pace. Um, I like when Botterell said, feel, I like when Housley said, Speed, pace, fast, activating of the D. I'm really that quote made me feel very confident in the style going forward. I mean, they need some players besides they need a, another puck mover defenseman besides Ristolainen. Like I said, besides Ristolainen and McCabe, the defense was a mess. Although Weber did very well into Housley, so I think um, Housley should help Ristolainen and McCabe. But 
I think the Sabres need like one or two defensemen before I could consider them a playoff team. A cup contender? Uh, probably not. And, and when, when the Sabres started to tank, many, many of us figured it would take about three years to get a cup contention. Because that's how long it took Pittsburgh. That's how long it took Chicago. So, I mean, there's different factors. It takes the teams a lot. But that didn't happen to Buffalo. Well, it could still happen next year, but we missed the playoffs this year. And I mean, yes, there's, there's a lot of different factors when it comes to winning the Cup. Luck, talent, development. Sometimes it takes teams longer than others. It took Edmonton forever and lots of years of tanking to get good. But I think mo- still, I think most of us were expecting the Sabres to be in the playoffs this year and then compete for the Cup next year. But of course, I think we're held back a year. I mean, you never know. Maybe we could, maybe Housley could find a plan to get them in a cup of tension. But I think this is going to be another growing year. So I think the Sabres might, might be one more wait one more year before they're in cup of tension. Um, the he had a, Phil Housley had a press conference today, so. I gotta say, at least the me- the media did a lot better than they did with uh, um, Pagula, the press conference earlier. They didn't ask about football. They didn't ask about the tank. And um, it was a very good interview. So I'm cautiously optimistic for Housley. Now he needs to find the now Pagula needs to find the Amherst, their coach and their own GM because Botterill says that winning in Rochester is important. I mean, I thought the Sabres were heading in the right direction even even beforehand. But it would be nice if, if Bottle could build a winner in Rochester. Who do you think the Amherst should hire as their general manager and, and coach? Hit me up on Twitter at JRedShow. On, on to the Stanley Cup playoffs where Pittsburgh won it for the second year in a row to be in Nashville in six games. I'm not taking anything away from Pittsburgh. They're a great team and all. But my god, the officiating was just horrendous. So, Nashville scored. I mean, we had that stupid uh, re- replay challenge that took away a goal from Nashville in game one. I talked about that. And then in game six, Nashville looked like they had a goal, but the referee was, looked like he was about to blow the whistle. He was like, oh, I had the attention to blow the whistle. And it did not count. It was a clean goal, but it did not count. The NHL just keeps changing the rules. And you're not, you're not listening. For those who listen to watch it on YouTube and Twitter, read my shirt. It says, never underestimate the power of stupid people in large groups. That's the NHL. That's Gary Bettman. That's Bill Daly. And um, that's everyone else that runs the NHL. They have turned the league into a joke. I mean, I'm not blaming... I mean, Pittsburgh's overall the better team. I mean, I'm not surprised they won. They definitely have a dynasty going. Nashville's pretty good, but I just didn't, have the, didn't think they had the firepower to compete um, with, Pitt, with Pittsburgh. So, I'm not taking anything away from Pittsburgh. I'm not saying referees cost Nashville a series. But, good God, the officiating is just awful. The NHL and their rule changes is awful. They're just so inconsistent. Do you think the Pittsburgh Penguins are a top 10 team of all time? As a team and an organization, these Penguins are currently an all-time great team. Uh, Cro- Let's see, they have Crosby, who's being touted as a top 5 all-time. Malkin, a top 100 player and, and debated playoff great. Well, Murray has two cups as a rookie. Sullivan, two cups in two years as well. Rutherford, has, as a GM, is quite accomplished. Um, they are, there's no doubt you got, they, Pittsburgh has a great team, but I'm not sure if I would call them the great top 10 in, in all time, because they are way too inconsistent, not particularly dominant with these two cup runs. However, it is hard to evaluate, because the, the game just changes all the time. Like, you put Wayne Gretzky in today's NHL with all the clutch and grab and, and all that, there is just no way Gretzky would have cut all those points. Crosby's definitely one of the all time. If you meanwhile you put Sidney Crosby in like the seventies and eighties when the game was more wide open, 
But and I know that I was listening to some hockey podcasts, but comparing to Mario Lemieux, I think Mario Lemieux is, Lemieux is a better s- scorer, but Crosby's a better all on player. But then again, you put Lemieux in today's hockey, and you put Crosby in the 70s and 80s, it's a different story. The Penguins went healthy is better than last year's team, but last year's team in Game 6 of the Finals beat last year's, this year's team. Out. I think this decade will be remembered like the 60s, with the same lack of respect compared to the gaudy numbers and lack of competition of the 70s and 80s. Sad thing is people don't actually like competition. I discovered what people want is for a single champion to be su- supreme, until about four years when it becomes annoying, and then they want a new champion to kill the old and bulletproof and beat it by every time. I know I myself am annoyed by um, the Boston and, and Pittsburgh sports success, but these teams win the same year. We, we saw Cleveland and Golden State three years in a row, Pittsburgh two years in a row, New England two times in three years, Real Madrid three two years in a row. It's like, I mean, I guess, I, I guess it, 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 in some ways it's good to have some dynasties, but um, I guess you want, on the other hand, you want a little bit of variety. It's it's me, it's me as a bitter Buffalo fan. It's been a long time since the Bills and the Sabres have been good. So, I am just... That's why I'm getting sick of these these teams winning over and over again. And these cities. With Pittsburgh's Stanley Cup, that's their third, that's the third one in the Crosby era since 2009. And then on top of that, you have Pitt, the Pittsburgh Steelers win the Super Bowl 2005-2009. So, they've had quite a few championships. It's not as annoying as Boston, whose big four sports teams won 10 championships in the last 15 years, and it doesn't look like it's going to stop. But it's getting there. And in some ways, it's more annoying because it's Pittsburgh. They're a middle, mid-Atlantic um, city with, um, with kind of like Buffalo, mid-Atlantic city, and all those championships came in football and hockey. They say they have a baseball team, but the baseball team hasn't won in a while. Um... What are your thoughts on the Stanley Cup Finals? Hit me up on Twitter at jred 